time I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, will everyone stand and please move the flag? schools, February 7th at 6 o'clock is the soon-to-be kindergarten information night. February 29th is the end of the second trimester, and on February 15th, all three schools will have their Valentine's Day celebrations. Moving to LES, February 26th, penny wars between the grades begins. 
Moving to Mountain View, February 23rd, first grade presents by George. Their school performance is at 2 p.m. And February 26th through 29th begins Art All Day, LES for third grade. Finally, moving to Bagley, the 5th through the 11th was BES's Readathon. February 8th through the 15th is their Scholastic Book Fair. February 9th was their Caring Cats Breakfast. February 20th is the Seton Hill Dental Program for second grade students. February 21st, there will be the Penn State College Mr. Yabby's Grade Presentation for first grade. On February 22nd, first grade will celebrate George Washington's birthday at Fort Ligonier. And finally, February 27th through 29th is Art All Day for third grade across the district. Any questions? Thank you. Could you say that last part again, the third grade? Third grade. Um, Art All Day for the third graders. Art All throughout, Day. Yeah. That's the first <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Since uh, Mr. Baines isn't here tonight, it's been three years since I've done an enrollment report. I put together about a half hour presentation for you to thoroughly discuss our enrollment. The only thing I would point out to you is that uh, the enrollment report is attached. As always, uh, kindergarten registration has started. That started on February the 1st. And just to give you an update and idea of where we are today, uh, we have 76 kindergartners uh, registered, pretty evenly distributed across the three buildings, and that's just nine less than this point last year, so nothing to get too fussed up about it. Looks like we're right on pace. That concludes the enrollment report, sir. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move next week to approve Westmore Leader Media Unit Student Services Interagency Agreement uh, for 2023-24 school year. Uh, and we're going to Ask you to move on approval of a new store tuition agreement for student F. The attachment is there. We're going to ask the approval on intersite agreement for professional services uh, with the attachment. Approve teacher education affiliation agreement between St. Francis University and Greater Lake Church School District. Uh, attachment. We're going to ask to approve the updated Greater Lake Trove District ARP Essers Health and Safety Plan. 23-23 for school year and authorize administration to post publicly on the district website as required. The task is here for your reading. And we're going to ask uh, next week to post the future ready comprehensive plan for review. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Rucka. Next curriculum meeting will be Tuesday, March 12th uh, at 6 p.m. Moving into finance, uh, Mr. Yeah. I'd like to introduce our local auditor, uh, George uh, Jurisovich is here to present. Um, I passed around, he had uh, like a two-page highlight, so it, it receipts. Um, in addition to, I uh, had shared out the full draft of the audit, so you should have that on your computers as well. But I'll turn it over to you, George. Thanks for coming. Yeah, so my name is George Jurisovich. Uh, I'm the manager on the audit. Um, so you know, starting off the top of your outline here, um, you know, we're going to go through here, and um, it's going to sound at the first year, it's going to sound like I'm just reading off some random sentences, but this is technically required by general auditing standards. We're going to go through it. So, there were no significant difficulties encountered in performing the audit. There were no disagreements with management. Management representations are to be obtained prior to issuing the final report. And to our knowledge, there were no management consultations with other accountants. All right, so moving on to the financial audit highlights. The audit was performed in accordance with auditing standards generally accepted in the United States of America and also government auditing standards. We're expressing an unmodified opinion, which is basically the best opinion the district uh, could receive and basically means the financial statements are presented as they should be. Uh, there were no material misstatements and we have no audit findings. So now moving on to the government-wide financial statements here. Um, on the statement of net position, total government-wide assets stay fairly the same, only decreasing uh, about 2.6% to 99.2 million. Total government-wide deferred outflows of resources increased 10.6 million, or 61.9% to 26.2 million. And even though this is a large one, um, this is a large fluctuation here, you know, there's nothing really to be concerned about. You know, when it, when it comes to the deferred outflows and infl inflows of resources, you know, what we're talking about here is basically actuarial calculations and assumptions and projections. And this is basically things that they think are going to happen in the future. And so I wouldn't worry too much about that just because there's nothing much that the district can do about it. 
Um, so total criminal wide liabilities remain virtually the same with only a 0.16% uh, increase. And then total government wide deferred inflows of resources increased 1.1 million or 8%, again, because of the actuarial calculations. Moving on to the statement of activities, government wide revenue increased about 6 million or 9.4%, which is mostly due to additional federal funding received during the year, but also due to the changes in the pension items and the OPEB items. So government wide expenses increased by about 4.8 million to a total of 63.7 million, which again is mostly due to the additional federal funding for the COVID money and thus the spending of that money. Um, and so this all adds up to a total increase in that position of about 5.9 million, which is a 22.6% increase, which, which is definitely a good thing. So we're going to move on to the governmental fund financial statements. And for the purposes of this meeting, we're really just going to be focusing on the general fund. So general fund assets were 16.4 million, which is an 8.9% decrease, which was mostly due to just less cash on hand at the end of the year. General fund liabilities were 9.7 million, a decrease of 11.8%. And there's not really one item I can point to with this one. Um, it just seems like liabilities were down across the board. And then general fund deferred inflows were 1.5 million, which is a $185,000 increase. So now we're going to move on to the revenues and expenditures of the general fund. Revenue increased 5.2 million, which again, is the additional grant funding during the year, and expenditures remain fairly the same, only, because, uh, only increasing 1%. General fund net other financing uses were about 8,000, and that adds up to a decrease in general fund fund balance of about 491,000. All right, so, and then we did have a prior period, uh, a small prior period restatement this year, where the activity fund is now being reported as a governmental fund rather than a fiduciary. And there also was a $15,000 uh, correction in the long-term liability balance. And so now moving on to the single audit, which is an audit of the district's major federal programs. So total federal expenditures were $6.1 million. The major programs tested were the Child Nutrition Cluster and the Education Stabilization Fund. And again, the district received an unmodified opinion on both major programs tested as well as the schedule of expenditures of federal awards, and there were no internal control deficiencies noted. So, and then just at the bottom there, that's just our contact information. Of course, you can feel free to reach out anytime with any questions or concerns, but for now, is there anything I can address for you at this time? I'll see and I know that's a lot of information, but I reviewed some of this with the Finance Committee meeting, uh, group before the meeting. And I'll share with the rest of the board. If anybody has any questions, uh, you can ask those questions to me. I'll work with George and get a response back to you. Or if you're comfortable reaching out directly to George, feel free to do so, okay? But hopefully we'll get your approval for this uh, uh, the meeting next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, George. I appreciate your time. Can you take the rest of the stuff? Oh, okay. Uh, Next week, we will approve the treasurer's report as attached, then approve payment of bills as attached. Moving on, uh, approve the purchase of senior high school marching band uniforms through PA CoStars, and approve gift grants and donations as attached. Um, the finance committee meetings from January 9th are attached, and the next senior high finance committee meeting will be Tuesday. March 19th, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. in the Senior High School Library. Moving on to Facility Operations and Planning, Mr. Gockel. I have nothing to report, Mr. President. Next, uh, Facility of Operations and Planning Committee meeting will be Thursday, March 7th, at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Gockel. Thank you. Uh, moving into Student Activities and Recreation, Mr. Petrarca. I have nothing to report this time. Thank you, Mr. Petrarca. Uh, going into community relations, Mr. Urban. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Rachel McClure was her school district reports and recreation commission meeting. Minutes approved for December 21st, 2013, with in the attachment. <clears throat> and the next uh, course of recreation commission meeting 
the uh, first of January 18, 2024, 4.30 p.m. at the Community Township in Thank you, Mr. Urban. Uh, there was one in the meeting, Mr. Clement. The first item we'll be taking a look at next week is the proof of participation in the WIU Joint Pur Purchasing Consortium 2024 to 2025 authorization for multi-purpose paper bid. And then um, as a note, the summary of the WIU board meetings are attached. And the only item that I wanted to add is that the spring bingo fundraiser uh, for the WIU, one of the largest fundraisers of the year, is scheduled for March 16th at Rizzo's. Um, if anybody's interested, it's out on their website. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, transportation, Mr. Merle Allen Music. No report. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Music. Moving into EWCTC Joint Operating Committee, Mrs. Kozar. Yes. Um, we will have a student of the month next next week, correct, um, from EWCTC and the attachment um, the agenda from the January 24th Joint Operating Committee meeting is attached. And we will be having Discover EWCTC, which will be held Monday, February 26th, at, from 4 to 6.30, for prospective students to EWCTC who are not currently enrolled with their parents and with their parents and guardians. Um, so that's for your information. And our next Joint operating committee meeting will be February 28th at 10 p.m. And I'll just keep going. We have a first reading of board policies listed below. There's quite a slew of them. Um, as you can see, and so we will vote on that first reading next, <coughs> next week. Thank you, Mrs. Bezar. Thank you, Mrs. Bezar. Uh, there is no technology report for this evening. Uh, moving into the superintendent's recommendations, Mr. Franca. Next week we'll approve resignations. Uh, we have one coach and a member of our food service team who I believe is, is uh, resigning due to retirement, but more on that next week. Uh, we do have some substitute teachers. It looks like Mr. Mains has been busy interviewing folks. We may have more there as well. Um, we will also approve professional personnel long-term substitute teachers. and. Uh, just as a, a point of note on this, if you look onto the next page, we have several folks who have crossed the 91-day barrier. So these are people who started in a position at the beginning of the year, and once they hit 91 days in that position, they become a, like a fully-fledged first-year teacher. Um, so everything's retroactive back to when they started. And you'll see Gabrielle Lucas there, retroactive to 117. Um, she'll make her 91 days, we know that, uh, before the end of the year. So. Uh, we will just go ahead and approve her on the step one. Um, we have uh, support personnel appointments. Uh, Mrs. Dominic has applied to be a substitute secretary and substitute food service worker. Always uh, helpful uh, to have folks on those lists. Uh, and we will also approve our 23-24 spring sports coaches and their salaries. That attachment is there for your review. Um, a couple of other business items. Uh, in service day on Friday here for our staff. President's Day, no school for students or staff. That is not a makeup day. I know uh, there was a question about that. Our snow makeup day is the Tuesday after Easter. So uh, any confusion there should have been on the school calendar as a day off, but it is. Uh, class of 2028, yes, class of 2028, scheduling fair uh, is on Wednesday, February the 21st in the senior high school cafeteria. That would be for our incoming freshman group. Uh, the Wisdom of Pods is March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd here at the high school. Uh, if you've not already seen Mrs. Brohoski for your tickets. We have a two hour late start on Friday, uh, March 1st for the purposes of grading. Parent teacher conferences, spring conferences, March 7th from 5 to 8 p.m. And unless you, I actually have a couple more things, so don't check out on me yet. Um, unless you want Mrs. Brohoski to show up at your home, you'd better have your statement of financial interest into her by May 1st, where she will hunt you down. I know that, because she has hunted me down. She lives right down the street from me. So please make sure that you have those turned into her. At your uh, tables, you have a copy of the Orange and Black, the publication from uh, the Foundation, as well as mailed to you in the mail is an invitation to the Loyal and True Dinner. That is the uh, yearly uh, dinner for our Greater Trail Partners and Education Foundation. 
We've talked in the past about the great things that they do uh, for our staff and our students and our school district. It would be great if you could attend. That's at the Fred Rogers Center. It is a very nice night. We will recognize the class of 1974 on their 50th, uh, on the anniversary of their 50th uh, reunion graduation. Um, and uh, also, we will recognize Donna Bates as the distinguished alum here from Greater Latrobe. Mrs. Bates stood before this board many times uh, and talked about sixth grade camp, but that's about one one hundredth of the things that she has done for our community. Um, if I may, Mr. President, before I conclude my report, uh, may I? Yep. You don't even know what I'm to say. No, um, neither do I. Uh, I have found one thing to be uh, absolutely true as an educator, and it's that some days you have good days, some days you have bad days, and some days you can have a good and bad day together. And today was a good and bad day put together. I want to congratulate Officer Dare, and I'm going to call him Officer Dare today because he's not Captain Dare until March the 1st. But last night at the Latrobe City Council meeting, Officer Dare was named Captain um, of the City of Latrobe Police Force. Uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, uh, I made what was one of the best phone calls ever in my career, and that was to Officer Dare, who was applying to be a City of Latrobe police officer, and I asked him if he was interested in being our school resource officer. And that one simple phone call and that one simple hire changed the trajectory of safety and security in this school district. Um, I'm proud of numerous things in this school district, but safety and security is certainly up there. And it's because of a framework that he and I built together over uh, eight, nine, ten years now. Um, and that really he had a true impact and a, a, a true influence on. Um, a lot of the officers that we have working for us were colleagues of Officer Dare when he was a member of the Pennsylvania State Police. Um, I say it's a good day and it's a bad day. What well, states because we are losing him on a day-to-day -day basis, I should say on a, on a hourly basis here in the school district because he has work now to do in the city. But it's a good day because I know the city of Latrobe Police Department is going to benefit from his leadership, from his skills, from his expertise, just in the same way that the Greater Latrobe School District uh, has benefited all of these years from him being around. Um, it's also a good day too though because he's in charge of the SRO program for the city of Latrobe. So even though he thinks he can get rid of us, we still have our hooks into it. So, sir, um, I want to tell you congratulations on your new position, and I felt it would be inappropriate to not recognize the fact that you are moving on to bigger and better things in the city of Latrobe.